was going to go out and about this morning, but then my daughter called and she's been away and just got back yesterday and we must have chatted on the phone for longer than an hour. So at that point, I no longer felt like going out. She actually caught me just as I was going out the door. So right now I've decided to go into my pantry and I found a lovely jar of pears that I put up. Now I don't have any ice cream, but I do have cream. So I'm gonna put a little dollop of cream on this and I'm gonna enjoy my pears with cream and a tea. And when I've done eating that, I'll get back and we'll have a nice little chat. Talk to you soon. Ooh, that's hot. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Tony from Her Homestead Skills. And yes, I just enjoyed my uh, pears and cream. It wasn't peaches and cream, but it's close. I like pears. Uh, I, I know not everyone does, but I do can up a few pears for myself. And when I look around in my pantry and find them there, oh yes, lovely, lovely to have some pears. Now I can just eat them just like that, or certainly ice cream on it would be even nicer, but the cream was pretty good too. Anyway, today, yeah, I think I want to talk about what, what, the chickens coming home to roost? Yeah, I think that's what's happening here. Okay, first off, a couple of things. I, I'm not really following it in any big way, and I'm not a news person. I just maybe bring you some thoughts about what my thoughts and what my beliefs are, and I'm not a newscaster. I know some of you, some people have thought, oh, you're just secondhand news or spreading news or whatever. That's not the, that's not the case. I'm just presenting an opinion and everyone has an opinion. I think all of you do too and you're certainly welcome to share your opinion. I don't shut anyone down unless they're really ignorant. <laughs> so <clears throat> yes, feel free to voice your opinion. I don't object to that at all. And that I guess is uh, as much in regards to the standoff uh, at, in Texas and the support from the uh, truck drivers. I understand that, yes, the wall of silence has been breached just slightly. We have a few uh, people with no names going down there and supporting them. And I believe the two of them that I uh, heard are down there. It would be Ted Nugent and uh, Sarah Palin and uh, they're standing by the truckers and supporting their efforts and that's all good they if they choose to do that good for them nothing wrong with that so as i said i am following it more for my own personal interest it's of interest to me to see truckers and farmers across the world standing up for what they believe in and that's fair i think we all can do that to some degree and of course the more that people do the less they'll be able to shut you down. I know that there's been very concerted effort to shut down certain viewpoints and to raise other ones and it, that tide is turning. Uh, it, it's become apparent to everyone that that tide is turning and of course they're going to fight even longer and harder to make sure that it doesn't turn but it's done. It's already started. That wheel is in motion and uh, it can't be stopped at this point. So hopefully people will be able to find a balance. Everyone has some talents and it's a matter of whether or not they choose to use or abuse them. And as we are seeing that there are, there's even the criminal elements that certainly have their talents and they have no issue using those talents. And uh, I guess that's where I'm going with uh, the chickens have come home to roost. People's kindness if that's what it is, is being used against them. And sadly, that does happen today. And yeah, there's always unintended consequences, some good, some bad. I know in Canada, we have a housing crisis. When you think that the average home is worth more than a million, a million two for the average home, there just isn't the space here. There isn't the housing. There isn't the uh, population to absorb large numbers of other 
peoples coming in. So when you already have a saturated situation like the housing market and you have a huge influx of newcomers, you're going to displace somebody and you're going to displace <laughs> the ones that probably can least afford it. It's usually the way it is. I mean, we've seen it here in Canada where you have an influx of, of a certain group of people from a certain country that uh, perhaps has uh, certainly not the same values as you do, but they bring that with them. People bring their cultures with them. They don't leave them at the door when they come in. They don't say, okay, I'm Canadian now, I'm American now, and I'm going to live by your standards. No, they only understand what they understand, what they were raised in, what they uh, were taught, what they how, how they survived in their own environments, and they bring that with them, and they change your environment too. I know that every time there's been an influx of people from different countries, and in Canada that's fairly common. We have a group that come from this country, and then we have a few years later a very large group that come from another country, and so on and so forth, and I'm sure it happens that way in the U.S. as well. And they do modify the makeup of society, and sometimes for the better, but not always. And in the case where what's happening now, in that we're all being overrun by an influx of peoples from everywhere, who don't even speak your language, don't understand your um, thoughts, your beliefs, all they know is that they're coming in for free stuff, yay! They don't realize that the free stuff they're getting is that they're taking away from somebody else that's there. And the resentment that that will create, it, it does not bode well for them. It does not bode well for anybody. Not for the assimilation of these people and not for um, the acceptance of them. But is it already too little too late to even put a stop to it today? Even if you put a stop to it today, the numbers that are here are overwhelming. I have heard that in Canada, I don't know if it's legal immigrants or whether it is illegal immigrants, but a lot of them are <laughs> saying that they're going home. There is a group that says, no, we don't like it here, we're going home. And it turns out that they probably had a better lifestyle over there. It's funny because I do remember my granddad who came to stay with us for, oh, a year. If you don't know, we, yes, we are immigrants from Italy, legal. And uh, I think my aunt and uncle were the first ones here, and then they probably uh, uh, helped my mom and dad because my mom and her sister were like two peas in a pod, very, very close, and uh, they loved each other very much. And, of course, they helped my mom come over, and with that, the whole bunch of us. And as years went on, I think my granddad and my grandma on my dad's side came to stay with us, and they lived with us for one year. My grandma did not like it here at all. <laughs> she could not adapt, whereas my granddad had a different uh, attitude, and he was a little bit easier going, a little bit more, he wasn't so rigid in his outlook, but I do recall him saying, but yes, this is a great country if you want to earn a living. And in those days, there was plenty of work to be had for anybody that wanted it. And uh, so he said, yes, if you want to make money, this is a great country to be at. And you can work hard and you can make some money. But he said, back home, if he wanted to eat, he just went out to the hen house, got a couple of eggs, and there was his breakfast. He did not have to labor as hard as what you do here. At least that's what it was in his time and the way that he lived. Of course, it probably had none of the uh, gadgets and everything that we do today. I'm sure that he lived pretty simply. I believe they just had a small plot of land where they 
had uh, a little house and and a few animals. Uh, so they, it's not as though they lived extravagantly, but then again, uh, Granddad seemed to think that that lifestyle was just fine too. And uh, since my grandmother could not adjust, they stayed here for about a year and then they went back. She was a lot happier there. She, uh, even though both her sons were here, she did not like living in this country. And we're finding that some of the immigrants that came here as well are finding it very difficult because everything is super expensive. And whether or not they can get work in the same manner, I don't know. I know I always found it really hard to sometimes get a job. It wasn't always easy. I, I could remember sending out hundreds of resumes one time. Life isn't easy here either. And yes, you have to work extremely hard to survive, never mind get ahead. So some of these people that are coming here because they've been invited and because they uh, are being looked after. And that's one thing I don't understand is that uh, how long are they supposed to be maintained before they have to stand on their own two feet? I have no idea what that is, uh, whether it's just one year or whether it's for the rest of their lives. That <laughs> these people are supported. I have no idea. Uh, they're given home, food, clothing, phones. What next? A car? An electric car? <laughs> okay. That may sound, uh, I mean, I may laugh, but I don't really think that it, that is all that humorous, really. But anyway, getting back to the chickens coming home to roost. I'm sure everyone is aware now of the situation where a bunch of these likely hardened criminals uh, beat up on a couple of policemen in New York and uh, they all joined in. I think there was quite a number of them and yes I've seen the video, I've watched it a bunch of times and it seems to be on the news quite a bit and uh, everyone's angry about this. Here we are, we welcome these people in, we give them everything and uh, then they beat up on our people. No. If it's too easy for them, they don't cherish it, they don't respect it, they don't care for it. So, uh, unfortunately, any, any parent that gives their child too much, the child is just going to keep expecting more. And if you don't give it to them, then they get angry. And this is what's going on here. These hooligans, these brats have decided that uh, this country owes them. And uh, no cop is going to stand in their way, and uh, nobody's going to stand in their way. The law doesn't apply to them, and uh, it's up to <laughs> Americans to look after them. I hope that this is a wake-up call for more people. But that's the way these things happen, you, and it just gets pushed to the extreme where it becomes ridiculous. We've had a number of these issues on various things and uh, reality strikes. What can I say? Reality hits. And do you want a lawless society? Because that's what that's where we're heading. We're heading into a, a situation where the police no longer have power or authority. Hey, they were too brutal. They were too mean. We have to cut them. We have to get rid of them. Well, so what are you going to do? Are you going to have vigilantes? Are people just, are we going to do the Wild West thing now where everyone has to um, protect themselves? And how ugly is that going to get? I still highly recommend that people make sure that they are as secure in their persons as they can be. Keep your head on a swivel, they say. Is that the term? Yeah. Look around. Keep an eye out. Make sure that you're not victimized. And with any luck, with more people waking up, some of this stuff will be corrected. But 
it'll take years. Sadly, it's, it's taken only, what, three years to create the situation? It'll probably take three times that much to even begin to correct it. But we'll see. Hopefully, there will be a correction. A correction in attitude comes first, and then a correction in action. So um, there, there has to be some action. There has to be something to say that enough is enough, and we're not going to take it anymore. And yeah, I keep saying that more and more of these occurrences that are going to cause the population to stand up against those that claim to lead them is happening more and more and more around the world. And it's not going to abate. It's going to get larger and larger. And you're going to see more and more of the world population objecting. Take care. Keep an eye out. Those of you that are interested in the truckers thing, I'm sure that you have um, videos of people that are following. There's no point in my regurgitating what they're already doing. So uh, you might as well just, uh, if you're interested, I know that there are sites that are following it. Actually seen a little bit of news on that respect in the uh, regular media as well. Even if it's only like a minute or so, there is some um, media attention. Perhaps not as much as it uh, deserves, but let's see what happens. It's early in the game. See if uh, hopefully it stays peaceful. I suspect that you're going to see a lot more media attention if things get ugly. And hopefully that's not the case. It might be better that everything is quiet and everyone's safe and those that have gone there are able to go home just as safely as they have arrived. Well, I think I'm going to go and make myself a small little apple pie right now and uh, probably enjoy that for dinner. Anyway, this is Tony from Her Homestead Skills. Hope you enjoyed this video. And certainly, everyone is welcome to voice their opinion here. As I said, don't get ugly, don't get nasty, and uh, all opinions are valid and welcome. Anyway, have a great day.